Sometimes the soul understands that it must prepare for battle. But in a world wedded to noise and entertainment, the spirit of Christ is drowned out. For the unsettling age of conflict and confusion has begun. The power and cunning of the enemy is revealed, and with it, the hopelessness of an age steeped in darkness. In this hopelessness, the soul cries out to God, Where are you? But in every soul, even among the ones who have been harmed by the world's darkness, there arises a sweet yearning for more knowledge of God, having received the grace from Him who is truth. This knowledge is only given to the one who seeks earnestly and inquires anxiously for Him. And how gladly would it find him who is so hidden away from it? In this diligent search, there appears to the soul a gleam of the light of divine grace. This light speaks to the soul and says, He is here the one whom you seek. Now the quest for the divine cannot be through any natural guidance, for he who follows natural light through books and writings in seeking God will but go astray. In truth, God cannot be known but for the shining of a divine light. There, in the midst of divine light, the sword of truth is waiting. But who can draw it from the stone? Who has the courage to brandish the sword so that it can cut through the darkness? It is waiting. This light cannot be seen but to the humble of heart. There is an axiom of faith formulated by our Lord Himself that admits to no contradictions and yet is rich in paradox. Everyone that exalteth himself shall be humbled and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And so it is that the proud will be humiliated, unable to fully know our Lord. Speak to me, my child. What troubles you? Well, nothing troubles me, Father. It's just that I wish to get closer to Jesus' cross. Ah, the cross. For indeed, humility, it would seem, makes us descend to the confines of nothingness. And yet it is in its depths that we encounter the fullness of being. Foolish men cannot wait for the light of grace to shine and guide them on till they find the divine truth. And in their haste and their impatience, they break away and seek for it by the natural light of reason, driven by their own pride. But all in vain, they cannot retrieve the sword from the stone, for they have not sought nor desired personal sanctity and the virtues. Hence they must bide their time, which has not yet come. And so, like the sages of the new age, many fade away, for they know not that it is in weakness that they are strong. For the Lord, who is the doctor of our souls, has come for the sick not the healthy. This yearning for God works strong within the hungry soul. In some it becomes so violent as to pierce flesh and blood, penetrating even to the marrow of the bones. For the soul's longing for God to be satisfied, 
he must use all the powers of natural reason. But natural reason alone falls short of being able to reveal God to him, for natural reason does not know God in him, for indeed darkness obscures the natural light of day, and so we are not drawn to the sword until the divine light triumphs over darkness and all lesser luminaries disappear from sight. It is thus that the clear beams of this supernatural light shines in the soul, causing all forms and images to dissipate. And so it is with the soul that seeks our Lord with such fervor. He will find Him and reveal Himself to Him. The Lord Jesus is calling us to a heroic life of love and sacrifice. He is drawing us to His fire so that you may become witnesses and lights shining in the darkness of this world. Rise up then, for it is time to draw the Lord's sword and to brandish it with might, for the Lord says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. And again he says, Indeed, the word of God is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. The Lord is calling. It is time to put on the armor for the enemy is near, and he who is truth will lead you. Fear not, for it is not by your own strength that you will win, but rather it is the Lord's armor that you have donned that will bring victory. Keep your eyes on that sword, and prepare your soul. It is time to seek the Master, and to prepare for battle. The enemy is fierce and cunning. The devil does not seek peace treaties. He desires only war. Be prepared for battle at all times, for the Lord has said, Cast all your worries upon him, because he cares for you. Be sober and vigilant. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. <laughs> 